Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Today, the RX 6700's memory is tiny. AMD and NVIDIA go head to head in mesh shader performance. The 11900K is a disappointment, and Intel teases their first high performance desktop gaming GPU. Okay, it's news time, and first up for today, yet another AIB partner has submitted the upcoming RX 6700 XT and 6700 non XT GPUs with the EEC. This time it's power color, and the big thing here is that we're once again seeing the RX 6700 with a pretty measly 6GB of GDDR6 memory. I say measly because this also further confirms that the 6700 XT comes with a full 12GB. Now, power color's listing doesn't mention the 6600 XT, which we saw comes with 12 gigabytes of memory, but regardless of that, 6 gigabytes for the 6700 definitely seems low. I mean, AMD does have their infinity cache, so it should be really fast, but the amount is still 6 gigabytes. I guess we'll have to wait and see how that may affect performance. But first, while you're waiting to finally buy a GPU, learn a new skill with today's sponsor, Skillshare, the online learning community and app that offers thousands of classes for just about everything. I'm talking programming, cryptocurrency, there's even a class on computer hardware. Basically anything you can think of, Skillshare probably has a class for it. I know I'll be touching up on my animation skills with this Animating With Ease and After Effects class by Jake Bartlett. Plus they're always adding more, so you'll never run out of things to learn. Oh, and the best part is that you get all of this for less than $10 a month. And the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. Next up for today, 3D Mark recently released a new benchmark that tests the GPU's mesh shader performance, and we have some interesting numbers between AMD and Nvidia. Now, the reason this is such a big deal is because mesh shaders allow for a ton more simple shapes to be rendered at any given time. Think of a big open world and all the geometry involved in rendering it. Mesh shaders effectively changes up the geometry pipeline by replacing multiple shaders with just two. What's great about these is that they can take a complex mesh, split it up into what's called meshlets, and process those in parallel rather than one by one. There are other benefits, but basically it'll drastically raise how many objects can be on screen. Anyway, when it comes to the benchmark, early tests have already been done, and at first it looked like Nvidia's Ampere was heavily outperforming AMD's RX 6000 series. Actually, Turing was doing far better with mesh shaders turned off than Ampere, which is odd. Of course, when mesh shaders are turned on, Ampere did great. Well, AMD just released a new update that effectively doubled the mesh shader performance of their RX 6000 GPUs. Basically, I think it's too early to declare a winner at this point, but with the new update, AMD and Ampere are looking very close. Next up for today, we have what is essentially a full review of Intel's upcoming 11900K, pitted against the Ryzen 5800X and the upcoming 5700G APU. And let's just say the 11900K is a bit of a letdown. Of course, I recently went over some big gains in single core performance on Geekbench 5. The issue is that it's just one benchmark. Anyway, the benchmarks were posted on Billy Billy and they are pretty interesting. Before I get to it though, keep in mind that both the 11900K and Ryzen 5700G are engineering samples. With that said, Intel's 11900K only had a boost that was 100 MHz lower than the retail clocks, so it should be close to the final performance. The 5700G, on the other hand, seems to have much lower clock, so I'll mostly focus on the 5800X. When it comes to the actual performance, we can see that the 11900K wins in both single and multi-core performance in most of the benchmarks here, though it's not by too much. The real kicker is that AMD's 5800X ultimately wins when it comes to gaming performance in all but player unknowns battlegrounds. Ultimately, the 11900K isn't looking to be anything all that impressive. With some good overclocking, it should do well, but without a big difference in multi-core performance or gaming, it's just a bit disappointing. Remember that this is Intel's i9 going up against AMD's Ryzen 7. Their 5900X will certainly wipe the floor with this in professional workloads, and with the gaming being so close, it's basically a toss-up. Really, I think this more proves that Intel's Rocket Lake is nothing but a stopgap to Alder Lake. 
And lastly for today, Intel's VP Raja Kaduri finally gave us a tease of their upcoming high performance gaming GPU. Remember that while Intel has released their DG1 discrete GPU, it's based on their low power or LPXE architecture. It's basically just their laptop GPU made into a desktop card, and it's not even being sold to the DIY market. The XEHPG architecture, on the other hand, is Intel's upcoming high performance architecture that's made for gaming. Anyway, moving back to the tease, we can see a tweet from Raja Kaduri that says, quote, XEHPG mesh shading in action with the UL 3D Mark mesh shader feature test that is coming out soon. Now, we know that feature just became available in the earlier story, but this is a few days old. Either way, while it may not seem like much, it's honestly a big deal. For one, it means Intel's upcoming HPG-based GPUs will support the most modern GPU features. Not only that, but if it's up and running on the newest benchmarks, Intel is likely not too far off from a release. Then again, the fact that Mr. Kaduri didn't give us any actual performance numbers is a bit disheartening. Still, Intel's upcoming GPU is really looking to potentially compete with both AMD and Nvidia's newest hardware, and that's a big deal. Clearly, Intel isn't playing around. So while that does it for today, do you think Intel's upcoming GPU will compete with AMD and Nvidia's best? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you love talking all things PC hardware, make sure to join the GamerMail Discord server. And as always, have a great day!